Hello and welcome to The Cook's Pantry. We are on location at the breathtaking Cobram Estate Olive Groves, where we're gonna be putting together a bunch of recipes highlighting their extra virgin olive oil for you guys to use at home. When I think of childhood food memories, one that rings a bell and is so dear to my heart is a beef stroganoff, and I'm gonna explain why. A lot of people have a, a different opinion and a different response to that dish. But for us, this was our, this was our welcome dish. So when we, we would make the trek from Sydney to Noosa every Christmas holidays, our auntie Dorothy would have a pot of this ready to go. We'd always arrive in the afternoon, tropical thunderstorms would hit, but we'd always know that the stroganoff was on and we were good to go. So I'm gonna run you through one of my all time childhood classics. We've had the beef in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes, and that just helps to firm it up a little bit because the key thing to getting a, a good stroganoff or even the technique for making a great stir fry, you need to have extraordinarily thin slices of beef to make sure that it's beautiful and tender. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a scotch fillet and just run, and you can feel that it's, it's got a slight butteriness to it, so it cuts through so well. Instead of trying to wrangle a piece of beef and then it'll start to tear or you cut it too thick. So we're just gonna run this through and just take your time, get it really, really nice and thin. And then we're just gonna dust it in a very simple uh, bit of plain flour, bit of smoked paprika and a little bit of white pepper. All right, so there's that beef sorted. Just got a little bowl here, which we're gonna dust it with the, the plain flour and the smoked paprika. So just got a couple of tablespoons and a good hit of smoked paprika a little bit of white pepper. So just mix that through the hands. And we've got a pan that we've had over here, get that to a really nice high heat. We're gonna fry this off in batches in the extra virgin olive oil. The reason why we do it in batches, we don't wanna shock the pan. The beef is very cold uh, as it's just come out of the freezer. So we wanna make sure that we maintain a nice high level of heat in there to get some beautiful color on the beef. In we go, good hit of the extra virgin olive oil. And we're going with the, the Cover and Mistake Classic. So it's a, a medium body, probably two or three tablespoons in there. You can hear it's nice and hot. And just in batches, even if you do it in three batches, just to make sure that you get nice color on the, on the beef. So we just sit that in there and let that color up. The reason why we add the flour to the beef at this point is that it helps to toast off the flour and to almost cook it out. Like when you're, you're making a bechamel or you're thickening a gravy, you want to toast off the flour and cook it so you're not left with that that floury, dusty mouthfeel um, if you just put it in raw, okay? So it's, it's doing two things, and then it's also gonna help to thicken up that beautiful, famous stroganoff gravy. All right, there's our second batch of beef in there. We've got beautiful color from it. That's, it's not just the caramelization on the beef, but it's, it's also aided by that smoked paprika. So you get that lovely rich color that will then transfer into that gravy. So the final batch of the beef can go, go in and then we'll move forward. Now, this is the part where you get that beautiful soft sweetness of the onion. So I like to cut it a, a similar shape that we did with the beef. So we're just gonna have some nice rough slices. So that way it's still got texture and it's still got presence when you're enjoying the dish. You get that lovely natural sweetness that will come out of the onion. So onions are done. We've got about 250 grams of button mushrooms, just sliced up, keep them nice and chunky. Don't, don't go mad, don't buy the ones that are really thinly sliced because it will wilt down and cook down into nothing. So you want to maintain a bit of structure in this dish. And then just one clove of garlic. All right. Get a little bit more color on this final batch and then we can go in and start to build the rest of the gravy with the onions, the garlic, and the mushrooms. We're starting to develop some beautiful color in the pan here. The mushrooms, the onions, the garlic have been ticking away for about five or six minutes now, and we've got that lovely caramelization. So what we need to do now, next crucial step is the tomato paste. And we all know cooking with tomato paste you need to cook it out. We need to cook out that rawness to really help develop that rich tomato flavor. So just set aside the mushrooms and the onions and go straight onto the pan, nice and hot. And we're just gonna cook out that tomato paste only for a minute or two. 
but it just, as I said, it cooks out that rawness and you really start to develop that, that lovely sweetness and richness that we get out of the tomato paste. All right, we can now go back in with our, our beef and you can see the amazing color on that. And even just touching that, it's slightly crispy on the outside, which is absolutely perfect. Just give that a good fold through. The two final key points, beef stroganoff, must have Worcestershire sauce. And this is one that I don't really hold back on. So we wanna go with probably two to three tablespoons in there and some sour cream. That's gonna give us that lovely creamy rich gravy that we're after, but also a nice little bit of acidity just to, to balance everything out. So we're going with about 200 mils of the sour cream and lastly, the beef stock. So we've got about a cup of beef stock that we'll get in there. And what's gonna happen now is the flour that we coated the beef in and toasted off, that's all gonna start to emulsify and gather up those liquids as we slowly start to cook this down and thicken up that beautiful sauce. When it comes to a stroganoff, there are an endless amount of possibilities of what you can pair it with. Um, some people have rice, I'm sure people these days potentially even put it with quinoa. That is not what we wanna do. We keep it classic, we keep it traditional, and we go with the original mashed potato. All right, so we've just got some parboiled potatoes here that we're gonna transfer into a nice deep bowl. And all we've got, keeping it really simple, uh, we've got 100 mils of milk, some full cream milk, and then a good hit of the extra virgin olive oil. So again, we're gonna be using the, the medium body. We're gonna get that lovely flavor that will come through the mashed potato. As soon as that oil hits the hot potato, you'll be able to smell it and it is absolutely incredible. So I'll just begin by breaking these down and then we can start to, start to season it up. So we'll just season this up. Good hit, sea salt, the white pepper, the extra virgin olive oil. So we'll probably wanna go in with three tablespoons. There's nothing better than having like a 50-50 ratio in your bowl. So you have half with a beautiful mash and then you have half with the stroganoff and just bit by bit, you're getting that, that mash is almost a, a vehicle for the gravy of that stroganoff. All right, so now we just mix all this together. Once we get it to a point where it started to emulsify and be well mixed, we'll go in with a wooden spoon and you can almost whip it to start to aerate that mash a little bit to get it really nice and light and fluffy. Mash is sorted. The, the stroganoff has started to cook down beautifully and the color starts to deepen. So that's the, the tomato paste, the caramelization on the beef and that smoked paprika really starting to come into play. And we've cooked through that sour cream. So you notice as soon as you add it, it will go quite pale. You wanna cook it back down until we get that lovely deep rich color. And the final finish, just a good hit of fresh parsley. Finally shred that and fold it through. Straight out of the top and then just give that a quick mix through. Always adding fresh herbs right at the end. If you add them in the beginning, halfway through, you cook it out, they become quite dull and lifeless. Just that last hit, last minute, fresh herbs in, and then away to go. So, just a cheeky little portion for myself. Like I was saying, a 50-50 ratio always seems to work well. Mash on the side, good hit of the stroganoff, and plenty of that gravy. Just like Aunty Dorothy. <laughs> she would absolutely love it. Here we are. What better place to enjoy a humble dish like that? The fire's on, the air's fresh, and the strog is good. <laughs>